So today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the tool for exporting all our drawing sheets um, to DWG. Um, it's hidden away on the um, documentation tab just on the drop down. I'll show you where that is. There's a lot of tools um, on there. But basically this streamlines the way that Autodesk Revit already does the job. Autodesk Revit can do this, as most people will be aware, but the way in which it does it can be a bit clunky. This actually gives us a much better streamlined interface and also gives us a few added benefits as well. Okay, And that's all done basically through this new dialog box which we'll get. Okay, So without further ado, let's actually have a look at how this actually works. So if I just um, nip over to Revit, here's my, um, my Revit project. Um, let me just put my project browser on. Here we go. So there's my project browser. In this particular project, I've got a series of sheets. And the whole point of the Power Pack tool here for the Exports DWG is going to allow me to take these out into a DWG with a few sort of um, changes that I can make into how it actually exports. As I mentioned before, when you actually install the Power Pack, it gives us a whole new tab on our ribbon. There are a whole host of tools all in here and all available for use. We can customize the interface now as a feature within the Power Pack, um, the latest release of a Power Pack. This basically allows us to make sure that if we're not interested in reinforcement, we can start to turn them reinforcement tools off. This interface also means that I can actually either turn the entire section of tools off or just certain tools which I don't want to use. So we can customize the interface to, to be the design the way we want. Um, under the documentation tab here is where we will find our export sheets to DWG. If I click on the tool, the first thing it's going to say is that there are no export settings defined. Um, and I'll show you how we can set them up. Basically, that's saying that at the moment, it's just going to use the in-session default um, export that Revit would actually give you anyway. But what I can do is if I actually go to the export options and go to my CAD export to DWG here, within here, this is now the in-session setup. So these are the settings which we can actually now predefine ready for the tool to actually use. So I can create um, a new export setting and we'll call this one Grey Tech um, Arc for the architects. And I can now start to set layering standards. So I can come in and set this to, to BS1192. This will now rename all the available layers to the correct export. I can look at my line weights, um, what my line scaling is going to be. So model space or paper space line scaling, how the patterns are going to translate, etc. Um, I can even choose um, how the solids will be exported. So if I was exporting a 3D view, I can decide how I want them to be done as well. So we can OK that. I now have my new in-session settings. So I'm going to go now and I'm going to go to my documentation and export sheets. I can now select, if I click like cancel, the export settings which I have set up. But I can also do extra things which the Revit tool doesn't allow me to do. For instance, when it comes to the naming convention and how I want to name um, my drawing sheets, I can dictate whether I want to have a particular name that I want. I can use variables, so project for the project name, and I can set a date on here. So this is a very powerful function, the fact that when I'm exporting my drawing sheets, I'm actually dating them as well. So I know what and when these particular drawings are actually created. I can then come in. We can select all the sheets that we want. Um, I don't have to select the unnamed one. I just want the ones that I need. I can then choose the version of AutoCAD that I actually want these to be released into. So I can go all the way back to 2007. I'm going to set it as a 2013. I also have the option here, which by default is unticked, which will actually create all the views on my drawing sheet. So in here, in this case, each of my floor plans as a separate DWG, and then they will be XREFed into my title block. So again, that would have given me the ability to have each individual view as an individual DWG. For this case, I'm actually just going to export them out all as one sheet. I'm going to click OK. 
set a location as to where I would like these files to be exported into my power pack web and um, my power pack folder it will take a little bit of time to, to do this but it will now create all of these drawings for me now what you will have noticed is that I actually had the gray tech logo on my drawing sheets um, that is actually an embedded um, JPEG this will automatically now sort that out and actually transfer the um, JPEG out as an XREF as well so if I now go back into my folder and go to my power pack here we have now the export and it's created the, J, the JPEG in there as well so each drawing sheet if I now go to my um, plans let's just launch the, the floor plans into AutoCAD and when this launches you'll actually see what it's actually created a model space let me just go to the model space a model space with all the views and then it's created a layout tab and it's then created the layouts correctly um, and the line weights and everything have been taken across as we would expect it's created a PCP file for exporting um, for the lines and then if I was to select and look at the layers that are in here we should find within my layer properties that it's actually created I can just drag that out he says that it's created all the individual layers based on let's pull that over there based on BS1192 it will only create the layers it needs to create this drawing so if I've got no say for instance no ductwork it's not going to create a ductwork layer but this has exported all them out um, and as mentioned before if I wanted to actually have them as individual drawings rather than um, as a model space with all the th views in if I select the export views in here that will do that as well so yes Revit can do this at the moment in a slightly clunky way what we get the advantage here with this tool is this very much streamlines it and I think the big advantage of a way that this works as well is it's the way in which it allows me to control the naming one of the things that we get um, we don't get within Revit um, which can be a big issue to a lot of people is when it actually comes to to a naming convention we basically get automatic or short yeah with a prefix or we have to specify each name manually it doesn't automate really um, the way in which we would like to to name our drawing sheets so thank you very much for joining us it's a quick one this morning it's a nice easy tool to use um, I think the big thing to remember here is if you haven't got that power pack installed get it installed and start looking at some of the tools that are available there is loads of powerful tools that are available in here and um, the webinar series is only covering a few of them um, if you have a look on the great tech website um, you will find videos that link to some of the other tools that are actually available for us um, if anyone's got any questions feel free to ask them now if not um, if you um, want to send me an email um, please do so. So thank you very much for joining us and I'll see you again next time for our next webinar. Thank you.